a discovery on one painting has a butterfly's wing effect on all of them. It's like that Kurt Vonnegut story where Ice Nine freezes everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of spreading. <laughs> Now let's get back to your development as an artist. So, you, you, you sort of you took up stripping, but you were more of sort of a you're more a performance artist than a conventional stripper, weren't you? Uh, well, I don't, I suppose so. I, I I landed stripping by accident because I jumped out of a cake at a party at East Sydney Tech where I'd been modelling and where one of the senior teachers. Uh, was retiring at the end of the year and this was a Christmas party with the surprise cake in which I was the the, uh, the lead peralta yeah. and um, uh, and I just did it because I was the model you yes. know, or <laughs> the they got you to the party yeah. uh, but one of the teachers had just made a film in a strip club. He asked me what I was doing for the holidays. And yeah. of course, artist models didn't get so much work back there. I said, well, in the belt, that yeah. I had some summer work and so on, but you know, not that much. And he said, had I thought of being a stripper because he'd made this fully. He said, the best part of the party's over now. You jumped out of the cake. Why don't you come around and meet these people? Well, I was introduced to Sandra Nelson. Right. A girl who'd got herself on the front pages of papers because she was at the same time as as the Perfumo scandal in in London. Yeah. She was having it off with a politician in Canberra, and um, and she married uh, a colourful character who had once been married to Rosalind Russell. Right. But unfortunately, and he wanted to make Sandra uh, a Hollywood star, yeah. and she was drop dead gorgeous. She was a living, breathing Vargas girl, incredible. Yeah. And um, and uh, and it should have happened, but he died six months into their marriage. A fact that his sister. Uh, Amy, who inherited the strip club, which was called Sandra Nelson's AO Club briefly, but it yeah. had always been and became again the Paradise Club in uh, Darlinghurst Road. Yeah. And so uh, that's where you began? That is. And... Uh, but you fact, used to work different clubs as well on the same night? You'd have no, to go I didn't no, do that. Didn't the, do that. The, the, the girls who worked for Abe Suffern had to do that. Yeah. But it was classier at the Paradise. Okay. Uh, they used to give us a meal, and yeah. uh, the same pay, a meal. They didn't take drag queens, and you didn't have to go anywhere else. Yeah. And you were very much protected, as I was. My, yeah. a, f a few weeks into being a stripper, uh, uh, I met Lenny McPherson, right. who'd obviously observed me stripping and wanted to meet me. Yes. Sandra Nelson said to me, uh, Tuesday night's your night off, isn't it? And I said, yes. And she said, uh, I hope you're not doing anything. And I said, I go to church bell ringing practice at Christ the <laughs> Church of Lord. And she said, forget that. We're going out to dinner with two very important men. I want you to dress up. And uh, we'll have a great time. Be at the what are you, at the front of the club yeah. where where the heavies used to sit yeah. in the dark corner uh, at seven o'clock. So I remember well that I didn't have the sort of thing you had to wear. I had to find the long uh, the longest thing that I thought was the best thing for the job was. I can remember a cotton hippie skirt and yeah. uh, sewn up in col coloured squares yeah. and whatever I wore with that. <laughs> and I got there uh, on time and there was already someone uh, in the corner, this very exciting guy who was tanned deeply and looked like... Uh, 
uh, Peter O'Toole and yeah. Lawrence of Arabia, that yeah. colour, yeah, 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 pretty yeah. similar, and this blonde, whitey sort of hair, and he was, he had a shot silk suit and a, and a wide tie with a diamond horseshoe pin in it, and uh, and he was just, uh, I, I was awestruck, I was introduced to him. George Freeman. Yeah. And I didn't know what to say. <laughs> I said, What do you do? And he said, I'm a crook. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, there you go. Then <laughs> this other guy came who was obviously my date. Yeah. They were talking, he was talking about Sandra and how, how he had a hard on so hard that he could have knocked down the wall with it. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, which I, in my innocence, certainly well consigned <laughs> to eternal memory, and many other things that happened that night. And uh, I was, Lenny McPherson was a big, lumpy, sort of doughy face, but kindly disposed i don't think that they were at all fair to him yeah. in that documentary i want to say for lenny mcpherson that was not my experience of that man who saved my life yeah. in the end he was totally courteous to me he could tell that i was terrified at the thought of what i might have to do at the end of the night yeah. and i couldn't relax although he saw that i was having a great time and that there was this ambivalence i'm thinking what do i have to do how could i do it and, so I go, when I went to the toilet, she, Sandra came out and she said, oh, what do you think of Lenny? Oh, I think, I think he's very like all that sort of thing. But she would have picked up that yeah. I hadn't a clue what was expected of me and, uh, and was terrified of what it might be. So Lenny had been talking about how he had uh, got into a scrap with someone and had three broken ribs. Yeah. Anyway, The message was put over that, uh, you know, uh, as good a time as I was having, that I just wasn't that sort of scene, you yeah. know, and it must have been that, but I can only work that out in retrospect because Lenny was saying, uh, he got onto the subject, but I can remember it so well the way it worked out. Uh, he said, it's lucky for Gretel I've got three uh, broken ribs because darling I wouldn't be any good to you today yeah. uh, and he said this a couple of uh, that, this sort of thing a couple of times he was so absolutely on the money and mm. relieved me so much I had the wildest yeah. time Robert Goulet uh, sang Sandra and I didn't have to look at the menu. We just said what we wanted. Yeah. We got it. We were ringside. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Chevron Silver Spade. Uh, <laughs> that was my first night out with men of interesting, um, uh, colourful characters. Colourful characters, indeed. And uh, yes, well, later, uh, year, a couple of years later, when I wound up uh, on a television show that was backed by Clive Packer. Yeah. Uh, that was anti the, uh, he crossed the floor as a liberal MLC to, uh, on the issue of um, censorship. Right. And that was in the days of the Oz trials and all that yeah. stuff. So, uh, and when this strong censorship bill was going to come, there were, I would, uh, uh, I had been asked to do a strip at a protest on Sydney Uni. Then, as I after uh, four thousand students were there, I got the front page, lots of pictures on Honey Swell. So I was asked to be on this program. Yeah. So at the end of that, and I go to the. Uh, I've been asked to find a few other people from the cross for the program. They wanted a sex change. And, stripper, a juvenile, sex offender, a drag queen, you name it. And I 
lined up these people who were ready to talk to Mark Willis or Jermaine Weir on a dull King's Cross night, but they were that none of them showed up for the filming right. of this thing, and I felt responsible for what, had, what yeah. they were trying to bring out. Uh, with what was actually going on in the cross and then these uh, laws against <laughs> all this other yeah. stuff. So, um, uh, in my ignorance, of pol in my political ignorance, I still believed in that, you know. And, yeah. um, so I suppose uh, what I didn't know and found out is that my very existence is political. <laughs> right? well, that's right, because you, it's about this time you've become very notorious around town, isn't it? Uh, I have, and you because talk about my was so wild, I used yeah. to go to parties just as Madame Lash.